Alright guys, so I just finished carving the neck, this zebra wood neck for guitar number 57, which is this beautiful tiger myrtle and redwood guitar right here. You've probably seen so much of this guitar that you're absolutely sick of it, but that's okay. So, a couple things about this neck here. I decided, just, you know, me being weird, as always, I decided to do a zebra wood neck with a zebra wood fretboard so that you would basically get the zebra wood all the way around. I did, however, include uh, a veneer beneath, between the fretboard and the neck. So I glued down some maple veneer to the fretboard before I glued it so that we could get this cool bright white stripe that provides just a little bit of separation between the two pieces of zebra wood there, just so you can kind of, uh, re really just to add a line to it, some contrast. So with all that said, I'm going to show you some of the process of carving this neck right now. So check it out. Begin as always by carving two facets away at the heel just to get rid of some of this excess material that's going to be in the way and is going to prevent me from rounding over the heel. I begin a little bit trepidatious here because I know that this wood can, the zebra wood can tear out just a little bit, but actually it seems to be carving just fine for now. As you'll see later on, the other tools I switch to by and large tend to be rasps and files, so abrasive tools rather than edge tools. And that's again simply because the zebra wood I feel like is just going to tear out a little bit more if I try to use something like a spoke shave. And here I'm carving away two troughs to set the nut to heel thickness taper of the neck. At the first fret the thickness will be 22 millimeters and it will taper up to 24 millimeters at the ninth fret. Now in actuality when it's all said and done it's actually going to be a little thinner than that still because the fretboard in this case is not radiused yet. So the fretboard thickness is actually going to be thickness down a little bit further down the line. And now the real work begins, carving down to my taper points. My favorite tool of choice here is the Shinto rasp, but as you'll see, I'll use a variety of rasps and files to get the job done. Almost had a little on-camera injury there. This thing actually, I don't know if you can see this on the camera, there we go. This thing actually snapped in my fingers while I was working there. And uh, no big deal, I can just keep going with this thing. This very fine little tip here was pretty unnecessary anyway. And actually I was just thinking right now, I might hold on to this and attach a tiny little handle to it and add it to my needle file drawer and make it into a little absolutely miniature rasp that I can use for extremely small tight spaces. So happy accident.
Here's a tip, the Velcro backed sandpaper that I use on my drum sander happens to also make for really good neck carving sandpaper. It's very soft and comfortable in your hands and it's thick enough that it's not going to tear. As I get closer to my depth marks here, it's a good idea to switch to slightly less abrasive tools. So I've switched my Shinto rasp around to the less coarse side. The less coarse side of this particular tool, of course, still does some pretty heavy damage here. So I'm only gonna use that for a little while before I switch to files that are even less abrasive. Now at this step, I have to be a little bit careful here. Ordinarily, I would have a much denser fretboard like an ebony or a rosewood. In this case, since I'm using zebra wood as the fretboard, which is pretty soft, I want to be careful blending in the very edge of the neck with that fretboard so I don't cut too deeply into the fretboard itself. As I mentioned, I ordinarily use something denser like ebony and I don't have to worry about that so much because the soft wood of the neck will carve more readily than the hard wood of the ebony. For the transition into the heel, I use a variety of curved rasps and files. You'll notice that I often switch between rasps with greater and lesser diameter curvatures to them, like this half round rasp alternating with the rat tail rasp. The greater curvature rasp, like a rat tail rasp, helps with targeting particular spots and the gentler curvature of the half round rasp just helps to kind of blend everything in after you've targeted those spots. So a mixture of both can really give you a smooth result.
So I'm getting very close to the final shape here. And so I have to be careful now with any little abnormalities that I want to file out. I just have to be careful not to produce other problems in the process. So I have to be pretty surgical with my targeting here. So for example, right here, there's just a little shelf there, a little bit of a bump that I need to file out. I'm actually using a needle file at this point just so that I don't really disturb uh, other parts of the neck. And then of course I'm gonna file this a little bit and then continue to blend it in with the sandpaper held taut at the sides. And the combination of targeting like this and blending with the sandpaper will make these little abnormalities completely disappear and blend in for a smooth contour. So let's see what this looks like on here. I'm gonna have to route a little pocket here for the truss rod extension. That's a normal job right there that has to be done later. So I'm just telling you that now because I won't be able to push this all the way in yet, but I can push it most of the way in um, and then the, the truss rod extension gets in the way. So. Until I route that pocket, this is as far as I can press it in there to show you guys. And it looks really cool. Um, I was really worried about how this was going to look, honestly. But um, the only thing that I'd say I'm, I'm not happy with, and I'm, it's not a terrible thing, is that I decided to do a stacked heel. So I used several different pieces of wood, um, all from the same zebra wood blank, and just stacked them up like this until I had the requisite height be able to carve my heel out of and you can just tell that it's a stacked heel because the banding in the zebra wood is so prominent you can see that the bands run this way and then there's a joint here and then it turns and goes this way and then there's a joint here and then it turns again and again it's not a terrible thing but I wish I had obtained a much larger single chunk of zebra wood so I could do the heel out of just one piece with only one joint and it would have just looked a little bit cleaner. So not a big deal, just a little minor aesthetic thing that bothers me. But uh, it's just something to think about if you're ever using wood that is very striped in its appearance, is that those bands, it's gonna be all that more obvious if you're doing um, a stacked heel with many joints. Whereas, here I'll show you as an example, with, here's my guitar neck, which I also just carved. Or guitar number 57 here, zero coat fretboard. This just has a single solid mahogany heel here. So there's there aren't these multiple joints running here between the different pieces of the stack because it's just one piece. And the funny thing is with mahogany, I probably could have gotten away with the stacked heel and it would have looked just fine because mahogany doesn't have any prominent banding in it or anything like that. So anyway, that's it right there. This actually came out a lot better than I thought it would come out, so I'm very happy about it. Uh, up next, I'm going to be, like I mentioned, routing that pocket for the truss rod extension, and I'm also going to be giving the fretboard a radius, which this fretboard being a softer wood, it's actually going to be a little easier to do the radius sanding than it normally is for, you know, 
something like this. But this I have to radius as well. Anyway, that's it guys. If you learned something here, please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new DIY guitar making video every Friday. And if you want to really learn more, take one of my structured online courses at ericschaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania.